If you live in an industrialized country, clean drinking water is likely something you take for granted. But do you know where exactly your tap water comes from? Well, if you live in the Great Lakes region of North America, the answer is obvious, the Great Lakes. It's no coincidence that a metropolitan region of 10 million like Chicago is situated next to one of the largest freshwater bodies in the world, Lake Michigan. But collecting and distributing water from the lake requires a massive network of infrastructure, which, despite its scale, goes unnoticed to most on a daily basis. So how does water get from Lake Michigan to the millions of residents of the Chicago region? Let's find out. If you've ever walked along Chicago's lakefront, you might see these structures offshore. These are called water cribs, and they've been supplying the city's water for roughly 150 years. They're cylindrical shells in the middle of the lake, funneling lake water into tunnels deep under the lake bed for distribution throughout the city. The cribs were built as a response to the demands of a quickly growing metropolis. Chicago, officially incorporated in 1833, quickly became a hub for the newly settling Western United States, growing from a city of thousands in the 1850s to almost 1.6 million by 1900. And while the city had always relied on Lake Michigan for water, the polluted lake water wasn't always reliable. Chicago practically owes its existence to the development of heavy industry, but with industry came pollution. In the early days of the city, pollutants from the city's sewers, factories, and slaughterhouses filled the Chicago River, whose heavily polluted water then flowed out into the lake, directly into the city's water supply. This spread disease like cholera throughout the city. A solution was needed to source lake water that was far away from the outlet of the polluted Chicago River, and that's where the cribs came in. The first crib was constructed two miles offshore and aptly named Two Mile Crib. It was built far enough out to avoid the direct flow of pollutants from the river. It connected to the now iconic Chicago Avenue pumping station and water tower via a five foot diameter brick lined tunnel, 168 feet deep beneath the lake bed. In the late 20th century, Chicago would further protect its water supply by building a new canal to effectively reverse the flow of the river away from the lake and eventually into the Mississippi. This itself is a fascinating topic that I can barely scratch the surface of in this video. In total, nine cribs were constructed between 1892 and 1918. The 68th Street Crib, the Dunn Crib, the Dever Crib, Four Mile Crib, the Harrison Crib, Lakeview Crib, Lawrence Avenue Crib, and Wilson Avenue Crib. Today, all but two cribs have been decommissioned or demolished, but the remaining two are responsible for 100% of the city's water supply to this day. Engineering interventions like these allowed the city to prosper with a relatively clean and safe water supply. While the heyday of industry might be over in Chicago, massive polluting industries still occupy the southern shores of Lake Michigan, including the U.S. Steel Gary Works facility and the Whiting, Indiana BP refinery. So in order to meet today's standards for safety, water from Lake Michigan needs to be purified, which is under the purview of two massive purification plants. These plants act as intermediaries between the intake cribs in the city. The Eugene Sawyer plant was built in 1947 and serves the south side and south suburbs. And the Jardine purification plant, opened in 1968, handles the majority of the city's water. In fact, it's the largest plant of its kind in the world. You may have seen it if you've been to Navy Pier. Plants are located directly on the lake shore accessible via the intake cribs. Water is treated with chemicals and filtered through sand and gravel before going out to Chicago residents via 4,000 miles of pipe. It's hard to grasp the scale at which these plants operate, processing around 1.4 billion gallons of water per day. After purification, the water is directed through 4,000 miles of pipe via 12 pumping stations distributed throughout the city. The pumping stations provide the power to move the water throughout the system. In addition to the city of Chicago, there are 118 suburbs that depend on Chicago's system for their drinking water. Considering the gargantuan task that is, the water system as a whole serves its function fairly well. But there are still glaring issues. For example, Chicago has more lead water pipes than any other U.S. city. Lead pipes add toxins to the water, negating the heavy lifting done by the purification plants on the front end 
And in spite of efforts like a 50-year state mandate to replace all lead pipes in the city, it remains a seemingly impossible task. Chicago has long billed itself as the city that works. And if there's any truth to that, it's in no small part due to the infrastructure that the city has pioneered, from crib to tunnel, to purification plant, to pipe. Perhaps the most important question facing the world in the coming century is water. It's entirely possible that climate change will render entire regions of the United States uninhabitable, the beginnings of which we are witnessing in western states like California and Nevada. What does the next 100 years look like for cities where water is a scarce resource? Places like Los Angeles, which rely on disparate water sources that are hundreds of miles away, requiring long aqueducts that snake through the desert, delivering water from reservoirs that are fast depleting, including the Colorado River, a river drying up so quickly that it often doesn't reach its outlet at the Gulf of California. Chicago, along with other Great Lakes cities like Cleveland and Buffalo, are lucky to have such a relatively large and stable source of drinking water in the Great Lakes. A fact that could position the Great Lakes as a critical region in the face of climate change. And we can thank the massive yet largely invisible system of infrastructure that helps get it to our tap.